Is drinking in secret a problem? Did you drink in secret? And how did you break free of it? They are three questions that I asked our group of strivers at 1000 Days Sober, and this is what they had to say. Uh, Kim started out by saying that she would sneak away from a party whilst at home to drink more than everybody else was drinking. So she's at a party at the house, or say a party like a gathering, people around the house, everybody's having a glass of wine. And then to drink more, she would nip into the kitchen, drink another bottle, uh, glass of wine, and then come back in so nobody thinks that she's drinking more than everybody else, right? Um, she said, I was like a bottomless pit that couldn't be satisfied. Uh, she went on to say, drinking in secret after relapse uh, because of the shame of informing people close to her that she wasn't going to drink again. Um, however, they always knew she was drinking. So again, you know, she's told everybody, I'm not going to drink anymore. And then she does drink, so she does it secretly. So she doesn't feel that shame and the, the or, or create perceived judgments from people that may or may not exist, right? Uh, she does say that um, when she did speak to people afterwards and came clean, they were like, yeah, we knew you were drinking anyway. So it wasn't like you can, it's not that easy to hide when you're getting hammered. Um, she, uh, Kim says, if we are drinking in secret, it makes it much harder to quit because we don't have the external accountability. So we haven't put it out there to people. So in a way, with Kim saying to her friends, I'm never going to drink again, she's doing herself a real load of good. Um, and when she drinks again, and then says to her friends, I'm really struggling, I just drank last night, she's also doing herself really good. She's making progress. But if she uh, doesn't do that, and she goes to drink, then she's taking a few backward steps. Kim says, we're in a bubble of lies and deception. And most of all, we're dealing with it alone because we're doing it in secret. So that was Kim. Uh, Anna, so Kim's is all about fe uh, about shame. Anna says, uh, it's fear. What's so insidious is that when in hiding we're drinking, we never think of alcohol as being the intruder. There is absolutely no one there to shine a light and help you through it, she says. Uh, she said she drank in secret because she was fed up with people telling her that she couldn't drink. So she was just like, okay, I'm just going to get away from people. I'm going to do what I want to do, okay? Um, and she, on top of that, she didn't want people to know that she her drinking problem had worsened. So it was different to everybody else's consumption. And she was always chasing that quick fix. How did she break free of secret drinking? She said eventually the desperation and the pain and the suffering led her to Google to find out more about a problem, which is where she found 1000 Days Sober. And she took the 1000 Days Sober experience and she replaced her secret drinking time with homework assignments. And she said the knowledge that she gained throughout the 1000 Days Sober experience really helped her to stop drinking completely. Uh, the other aspect of how she got out of uh, secret drinking was to take the vow, which is to... Um, really with some integrity say I'm not going to drink ever again or I'm not going to drink for a period of time but treat your vow like you would a marriage vow so if you're uh, in western culture and you get married you're going to vow that you're not going to have an affair that you're not going to sleep with somebody else and you take that most people take that very very seriously right so we teach you at 1000 Days Sober that the vow is really important but if you take the vow to yourself and privately to yourself and you don't, you know, give that to other people, you lose that external accountability. And that external accountability is another form of leverage you could use to stop drinking. So, you know, Anna used that to great effect and lots of people have done that. She also said Strive, uh, our support system, is really important to her when it came to uh, not drinking in secret because, as Kim said earlier on, drinking in secret is all about shame. Um, Brenny Brown teaches the way to destroy shame is to talk about it. Strive support helps you because you're not talking about it to your parents or anybody you think has got perceived judgments over you. You're actually sharing it with people who want to share the same thing and who have gone through the same experiences. So finding a support system like Strive is really important. She said the truth about alcohol changed my whole worldview and vulnerability is now her friend. I now walk in glorious freedom, says Anna. 
Uh, Laurie says that secret drinking is a serious and dangerous problem. Uh, she says it gives you an open license to drink without self-regulation. I think that is really important. Even drinking at home with people as opposed to drinking in a pub is dangerous because of the lack of self-regulation. Like the the amounts that you give yourself, the, the, the time to stop drinking, none of those things exist. Um, and you can just really go to town. Uh, she said, we give ourselves permission to let it get as ugly as possible without social checks and balances. Like you can really get ugly when you're on your own. Again, she talks about shame. Uh, there is less shame when you're on your own because nobody's there to judge us. And she said that while she didn't have great bouts of drinking alone, one thing she would do is that she would nip into the kitchen and uh, take, you know, sneaky gulps while nobody was looking. Again, uh, you know, to, to get ahead of the game, I guess, to, to get ahead of people. Uh, my, Michael says that when you start drinking in secret, this is the moment you know your life is going to shit. That's what Michael says. Um, if you're drinking in secret, you're hiding it from someone and you've got to ask your question, why? Sue says, drinking in secret, um, she used to do that if it was just by people to be too early. So I I, I, I can um, relate to this. So we used to drink on a Sunday at 12 o'clock and that was like the earliest you would drink really um, when the clock struck noon. But if you drunk at 10 or 11, then you're getting into... That guy's an, or that woman's an alcoholic territory. So uh, drinking in secret can be driven by stigma and driven by societal conditioning and the stories that we create around what is acceptable and not acceptable around alcohol. Um, Sue, very similar to Kim, said that um, one of the ways she, one of the reasons she would drink in secret was breaking vows to friends. She particularly weekend when she would say, I'm only going to drink on week weekends. And then she would drink on midweek. So she would drink uh, out of a, a mug, but she said she never fooled anybody. How did Sue stop a secret drinking? She just stopped drinking. And I think that's really important. Uh, Polly said she used to drink to get a head start on people. So, you know, you're going out for a night and you know, you're going to get smashed, but you just want to get a little bit tipsy and smashed before you get to meet your people almost like a social anxiety kind of pain numbing thing. Uh, she couldn't face the pain of the mess that she was in and she was just totally ashamed and wanted to numb it out. And Eric said he drank alone because he found the pub unsociable and uncomfortable. So it wasn't like he was, um, you know, in a house surrounded by people drinking alone. He did his drinking alone because he just didn't want to be around people and he wanted to drink. So there's a few things uh, that come through there, isn't there? You know, the, but the main one is shame. The main one is if we're drinking in secret, then we're ashamed of our drinking. And if we're ashamed of anything, we really need to question why that is. For me personally, the only element that I kept secret about my drinking was to save my career. So I would often drink too much and go to work with a bad hangover and because I was in a senior management position and we had drugs and alcohol policies, I would lie and tell people that I had a hangover. Uh, another thing that I would do is I would skip work and say that I needed to work from home when really I would just lay on the couch, like dying. So that for me, again, it's linked to, sh it's, it's not just linked to shame. Um, it's linked to, you know, that your drink has got to a point where you could actually lose your job. So in those instances, I would have made a decision knowing that the upshot of that is I could lose my job and my integrity around my um, my alignment with rules around my business, which is non, just were not there. Like just drinking alcohol was more important than my own integrity. Um, I agree with what everybody's saying that if you if you're um, telling lies about your drinking and you're drinking in secret, you it's a problem. Like you've got a problem and you need to do something about it, and it will be attached to shame, and you need to find out why you're ashamed of drinking, why you're having to do it in secret. Um, that is important work if you want to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol. Uh, because like I said, Brenny Brown says that the way you remove shame is by leaning into vulnerability, is by talking about it. So please start today um, down below answering these questions. Is drinking in secret a problem for you? Did you drink in secret? And how, if you did, did you break free of it? Start today sharing down there and get to www.1000days.com 
um, 1000daysober.com and join uh, the 1000 Day Sober Experience so you can learn how to stop drinking alcohol because that's the answer here, folks. If you're worried about drinking in secret, what's the answer? Stop drinking. Don't compartmentalize it. Just stop drinking and then you won't be doing it in secret. Thanks uh, for watching as always.